I like this little museum of prior Royal Rumble wins, but I also find it sad that WWF left out Big John Studd and Yokozuna's wins in the history. What's the point of showing all who won the Royal Rumble if you're not going to show literally all of them? Should I ask that question again about 2004? Nah, probably not. Now Venus, Goldust, Mr. Perfect, and the Godfather. To anyone who complains about the company spoiling entrance in the Royal Rumble match in later years, it was much worse in 2002. The Godfather, Val Venus, Goldust, and Mr. Perfect all made their returns to WWF on this night, but the company decided to blatantly spoil their returns. For the former two, it was also a return of their prior gimmicks, which would have been cool for a surprise return, but WWF said fuck you. And then it turns out that the pyro had an actual bullet attached, which destroyed the entire set. So we got a destroyed set for the entire three hours. This video bomb an asshole behind Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler. Well, I guess this is an impromptu stipulation change. We now have a tornado tag team match for the World Tag Team Championship tonight. Might as well just roll with it since the referee started the match with everyone in the ring. Can't believe I'd be praising freaking Spike Dudley of all people for actually remembering to sell the neck injury that put him in the brace. But anything is possible. I'll take a sin off and be thankful that this isn't the present day where everyone just forgets about everything they're supposed to be selling. The fans are chanting, we want temples simply because the Dudley boys are wrestling tonight. Understandable, but you do realize you're unintentionally asking for their disqualification from winning the tag team titles, right? I don't know if the funny part was the Dudley boys accidentally clotheslining each other or they're jumping to the air as they collided with each other. Whatever the case, I can't stop laughing at it because it's so hilarious. Belly to belly suplex throw attempt failed. Damn shame too because Taz got the hot tag and there was a botch almost immediately. Smart move on the part of Bubba Ray Dudley to break up the pinfall and save the match for his team, but at the same time he risked Devon Dudley getting literally squashed by Taz's body weight when he punched him down. Gotta be careful because you might hit Devon so hard he'll be convinced that he's a reverend of some sort. His own body on the line. What the fuck was that? I won't lie, I'm actually shocked that this match ended in under 5 minutes because it was chaotic and fun, but it really showed how threatening Taz is and how quick he can make you submit. Previously on WWF. You see that? I know, right? Lily and Garcia actually jumped from something that wasn't even that loud and she saw it coming at the same time. Don't want to gamble with the devil? Well, tonight, I say the devil gets burnt. Well, that doesn't make any sense. The devil literally resides in hell, surrounded by flames 24-7. Wouldn't getting burnt be something the devil would actually enjoy? The, brass knuckles wielding the referee checks the apron to make sure that William Regal isn't hiding any brass knuckles underneath the curtain, but doesn't once think to look underneath the ring or behind the steel stairs. Just a couple of pats and we're good. Right now, I bet William Regal's regretting not putting the brass knucks up his ass. Wait, no, the referee likely would have performed a cavity search and shut the company down. Wait, what? The referee gives Edge his five count, Edge refuses to listen, so the next thing the referee does is restart the damn count? Does this mean Edge can just beat down on William Regal as long as he wants or something? What a backdrop that was. Gotta admire William Regal hanging onto the double arm under hook even after getting suplexed and nearly pinned by Edge. Let's be honest, I don't think William Regal would have connected that same Tiger driver he hit before, even if Edge didn't counter due to Edge not being in the right position. Even after seeing Edge's legs obviously hanging outside the ring, the referee still decides to count the pin and only stops when William's foot gets on the ropes. Out of bounds is still out of bounds, even if the appendages are not touching the ropes. Quit your cheerleading, Jerry. Not to mention, you're also prematurely declaring William Regal the winner. Well, I can't be sure, but that move seems to look like an obvious Regal stretch, the same move we happened to see not even five seconds ago, and Edge is seemingly committing copy stretch infringement. Nah, it's probably oral sex. The referee literally shoved his hand down William's trunks earlier and found the brass knuckles hidden within his Regals. How the hell did he miss the second set? I can't even blame William Regal for pulling the referee in harm's way because Nick Patrick was already in the way when Edge went for the spear. Maybe Edge just wanted to hit the referee out of jealousy because he didn't get his own junk searched earlier. Also, the referee gets knocked over at the crucial point of the match cliche. Guarantee you just said that for me before I ever did. Poor Jacqueline. Women's division has nothing for her, so let's make her into a referee while we continue to figure out how many more strip-related matches we can come up with. Quick question, a lot of people say belts are legal because they're being worn by wrestlers and thus are part of their ring gear. Does that mean Trish Stratus can use her women's championship as a weapon since she was wearing it at the start of the match? I just don't like to see Trish's beautiful body being yeah. mistreated like that. And Atlanta also doesn't like it when the Falcons never win the Super Bowl either, so you'll be fine, Jerry. Yeah. 
Is this back when Stratus Faction wasn't Trish Stratus' true finishing move? If true, it really made the move not that effective since Jazz recovered from it almost instantly. Thus, when it actually became Trish's finisher, it's awkward. What, is this Royal Rumble pay-per-view on a time crunch or something? The first three matches ended within the first half hour of the three-hour event. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you Vince McMahon's mandatory yearly street fight because he needs to get his ass destroyed in a hardcore style match at least once per year. Today's willing participant, Ric Flair. And who's got the to step into the ring? Saying balls is apparently illegal during an era where there are blood and strip matches at least once per major event. Also, with all the back and forth chaos between these two while being business partners, how did Vince McMahon not realize that Ric Flair was going to place himself as the opponent? Reed Flair looking like he absolutely regrets being Ric Flair's son. In a match like this, that's a big ouch moment. Did you ever think in your life you'd see this match? No, because I never wanted this match or even thought about the possibility of it existing due to lack of interest. Oh, man. Copyright in Flair, man, and I'm continuing to be justified for not being interested in the street fight. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but are you assuming that Vince McMahon is gay, Jerry? Did he tell you a secret that he accidentally aired on the live broadcast? EXPOSED! I'm telling you, I'm absolutely amazed! Oh. <laughs> Classic! This one here tonight. Oh. Vince McMahon breaking the rules of that sign he used on Ric Flair's head. It says, keep off, so Vince does everything but keeps off it. Dick. The way Vince threw Rick into the barricade, there is no logical way that Rick's head would suddenly bend over just so he can hit that sign. The referee asks Ric Flair if he submits despite the fact that everyone is outside the ring. Rules of a street fight state that it can only end by pinfall or submission inside the ring, so whether or not Rick can continue is out of the question. I guarantee Vince would take credit for this as the first ever selfie despite being nearly two centuries too late for that. That means anything goes, from the nose to the toes. Fuck you. Almost this entire match is Jerry Lawler making sexual references to Vince McMahon's physique. It's bad enough this street fight is horribly executed, now even the commentary was poorly executed. So far, terrible start to this event and we're already in the fourth match. Keep it up. Hey, look at that. Vince apparently hit a lead pipe under the timekeeper's table as if it was an illegal weapon that the referee would confiscate. And if he was afraid of Rick using it in the match, why not just carry it with you during your entrance? We seriously had to use the sideways monitor for the instant replay instead of just doing the usual graphic? I can barely see shit here. What sucks is this street fight was horrible despite the unique buildup, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't laughing at the way Vince McMahon tapped out to the figure four leg lock. Hey, at least the ending was funny. To give 29 other men in the Royal Rumble. Are you claiming that Triple H is starting the Royal Rumble match? Because that's the only logical way he could beat down 29 other opponents here. If so, spoiler alert. And if not, you suck at guessing. What? Nearly two minutes of wedding. I know it's Stone Cold Steve Austin's thing, but this goes on way too long. This when you thought it couldn't get any bigger than Vince McMahon against Ric Flair. That ridiculous street fight was considered big? Holy crap, we're in the dark ages even in 2002 here. I gotta take a sit off for the way The Rock's eyes widened when Chris Jericho put his hand in his face. That's when you know Chris is screwed. Well, that's the most important thing. The Rock absolutely annihilated Chris Jericho from a simple talk to the hand motion, so Chris believes the smartest thing to do is to... Slap Rock in the face? Is he trying to lose his Undisputed Championship on purpose here? The One would think the referee is scolding Chris Jericho for kicking the Rock when he's down. I honestly think Earl Hebner is telling Chris that he didn't kick Rock hard enough and demonstrated his own kick, which ended up hitting some unknown rookie who we will likely never see again. Chris Jericho's crazy ask him phases. Three times in about five seconds or the referee was already asking Rock if he submits to the champion. Chris Jericho reacted too late from The Rock throwing his body weight into the ropes to trip him, so Chris inadvertently is a dick to his own Jericho's. Chris Jericho is shocked that the Lion Salt did not secure him the win over The Rock when that move has pretty much never given him a win in a high stakes match. Gotta admire Earl Hebner, even if the referees normally disqualify the wrestlers for putting their hands on them, Earl's the guy who won't take that shit. Push me, I'll push you back harder, until you push me again, which will somehow knock me out. Who told you to say that, Bret Hart? Wrestler taps out when the referee is distracted by outside interference cliche. This match between two great wrestlers honestly deserved better than what we actually got. And now we got a copy rock infringement. Considering Earl Hebner literally pushed Chris Jericho earlier, I don't think he gives a shit about that possibility. So we got nothing to worry about, JR.
Let's just be thankful that Rock was not standing on the table he was aiming for. We all know what happened the last time he tried to do that. <laughs> not to worry, guys. Earl was about to get back up and lay the smack down on the Rock for doing that. Any minute now. When referees have an actual heel character, it's annoying for all the wrong reasons. We don't care about this. I know this is supposed to be what a heel does, but this is an undisputed championship match at a Royal Rumble event. Heel referees, title belts to the face, low blows, exposed turnbuckles, and feet on the rope pins. All after a mostly disappointing match. Jesus, all that remains is the Royal Rumble match, and for the most part, this event sucks. Five sins for this unfortunate predicament we're in. As President Bush would say... Time for another vacation? Wave at Stevie Wonder? Sorry, I've been listening to Robin Williams stand up again. Alright, Howard, it's only an hour match. I mean, we're only 90 minutes into the three-hour show. I'd say we have some time to kill. All the other five matches literally ended in the first 80 minutes of the show as if we are on a time crunch. You ever been puked on, JR? Well, one time in the, in the Okay, episode, I don't, I don't, I don't Jerry Lawler asks if someone ever vomited on Jim Ross, but then chooses to change the subject the moment JR confirms it. Why'd you bother asking if you're grossed out on the subject? Did you expect JR to be like Michael Cole when Booker T got the stink face recently? Once again, just like I said in the intro, it's very unfortunate that Goldust was announced ahead of time when this is his actual return to the WWF. Should have kept that a surprise, you morons. Oh great, now we gotta deal with more of that gold confetti littered in the floor. The 1997 event really agitated me for that reason. Goldust taunts Rikishi and then immediately turns his back on him. Terrible strategy to kick off the 2002 Royal Rumble. Also, what do you bet that Rikishi avoids giving Goldust the stink face because there's a chance that Goldust would actually enjoy it. That, and he wouldn't want golden face paint all over his ass. That's one double feature Goldust don't want to see. Wah, wah. He was not. Oh, no. Someone told me to say this in the comments of a prior Royal Rumble Sins when I was confused on what to refer to this situation. Both Rikishi and Big Boss Man just shattered Goldust's dreams. Yeah, that sounded better in the comments. Here's every man for himself. If I have to hear that phrase again and again throughout this match, I'm going to be more annoying than I already am. Hasn't been a good night so far. Can we at least deliver a splendid Royal Rumble match? Goldust now down. And Boy, that has to be an awkward moment when the fans count to 10 for Goldust punches on Bradshaw while also counting down from 10 because the next participant is about to enter. I can't believe this is not even the 10th time I've said this in Royal Rumble videos, but why doesn't Rikishi reach over and lift up Bradshaw's other leg and flip him out of the ring? Why can't we get any logical eliminations here? All the way from Damn, what an amazing clothesline from hell. Followed by whatever the hell Goldust just did after that. Stay alive here. Lance Storm does end up getting eliminated anyway, but Al Snow really doesn't have good ring awareness because he's also gone over the top rope and any random asshole can just push him off while he stares and holds Lance's leg. I'm sorry, but I don't find it believable at all when three wrestlers, one of them being Rikishi, can't even eliminate Goldust. The more wrestlers there are, the easier it is to eliminate them. Or they're just once again not even trying here. Plot twist, it's actually Lita because Matt Hardy is too scared to fight The Undertaker by himself in the Rumble match. First, The Undertaker doesn't immediately choke slam Lita for getting involved, and then Lita doesn't even connect the low blow properly. What is it with this night? It takes about three minutes before the next entrant arrives. Perhaps the production team were merely enjoying watching Matt Hardy get his ass kicked and wanted this to continue longer because they're dicks. Wouldn't shock me. Well, so much for random draws, am I right? The entrant conveniently after Matt Hardy is... Jeff Hardy. What are the odds? I got a question. Who picked these numbers? See, even Jerry Lawler is questioning the convenience of this situation. This is not even the first time the Hardy boys are so close in number draws either. Happened last year, too. <laughs> the referee jumps into the ring to stop Lita from getting involved, but stood around like an idiot when she got involved two minutes ago. Where the hell were you earlier? Eating popcorn in the crowd? And also, this is 100% legal. Get the fuck out of the ring. I got the idea. Matt Hardy's intention was to hit the twist of fate. Meanwhile, The Undertaker thought Matt was aiming to hit a swinging neckbreaker. Come on, guys. Post-elimination assault. Two counts of it. I officially sentenced two sins. Court is adjourned. What a shocking moment. Hope this ends up working out for this young upstart's career in the future. It would really suck if this is all he can talk about from his wrestling career. Because we got The Undertaker beating down on Maven after getting eliminated, the time in between entrance is literally four minutes. No wonder this match went on so long. Production crew must be asleep half the time. Thanks to The Undertaker. Quick question, is this legal or is Maven allowed back in? Sorry for asking, the rules just keep going back and forth so many times over the years. Also, this beatdown of Maven by The Undertaker goes on for almost 10 minutes. When that happens, you'd expect this to be a big turnoff for the feud, but take a wild guess how this turns out. Bloody popcorn. Maven has never been eliminated. 
Wait, so Maven was eliminated, but now he's not eliminated? What the fuck is going on with these useless rules? So Diamond Dallas Page defeated the Big Boss Man to earn the right to enter the Royal Rumble match, but considering Boss Man ended up in this Rumble match anyway, what was the point of the qualifying match in the first place? A punch that never even connected with Diamond Dallas Page was apparently enough for Chuck Palumbo to break his own hand. Never thought that force punches could cause breaks. Ah, the legendary gimmick of the Godfather. Just a shame that we already knew he was returning to this gimmick leading up to the show. Quit taking away the surprises. He got the and this is why the split screen feature should be a factor in every Royal Rumble entrant. So you don't end up missing stuff like this and asking what the hell happened while you were distracted by an everlasting entrance. Each other. It's most likely the Godfather leaving with his hose, but you never know. Could have been the Undertaker continuing to beat the shit out of Maven. Is that still going on by the way? The stunner was so powerful it briefly turned Perry Saturn into a tree. Tree powers activate y'all! Hey, awesome. Normally I sin this for post-elimination assaults, but in this case I gotta remove a sin. Stone Cold Steve Austin has successfully eliminated everyone in the ring and doesn't want to just sit around waiting for the next entrant. So he throws Christian back into the ring to kick his ass some more and kill time. Fucking hilarious piece of comedy. Not the biggest fan of Val Venus' gimmick, but this is once again WWF spoiling what could have been a fun surprise for the audience. Fuck your surprises, we're just gonna spoil what's about to happen because we hate you. If Tess was aiming for Stone Cold Steve Austin, then he has Stormtrooper type aiming here. Stone Cold didn't even move out of the way, and Val Venus didn't even move into the way. Yet Tess gets upset when he misses who he never targeted in the first place. When are the not so awkward parts going to take place in this match? I'm begging you at this point. Boy, we can never deny the historic reception Triple H got at Madison Square Garden prior to this Royal Rumble match. But I'm just saying it would have been epic if we got that reception from a historic return followed immediately by Hunter's Royal Rumble victory. Only a minor sin, don't chew my head off, I still enjoy the MSG moment. <laughs> Gotta love it when the Hurricane tries to imitate the Undertaker's double choke slam only to just get thrown out by the less than interested Triple H and Steve Austin. WHY WOULD YOU SPOIL THIS?! We're talking Mr. Perfect here, returning to the WWF after being gone from the company for six years. Alright, that is a clever chant from the audience, mixing in Kurt Angle's You Suck with Steve Austin's What into You Suck What. In this sort of match, the, the Big Show missed Hunter with that big boot who spun around after literally passing the foot. Uh, sound guy, Kane's been in the ring for like 10 seconds. You can turn his music off now. Why do you keep falling asleep? Wait, I think I know why. It may be Kane's only big moment in this Royal Rumble match, but holy shit, that was awesome. We hardly ever see the Big Show get slammed out of the ring like that. Did Rob Van Dam make a deal with Mr. Perfect that they both wear the exact same colors for their ring gear tonight? <laughs> well, that was the weirdest way of getting eliminated tonight. Booker T shows up, eliminates Rob Van Dam, does the spin a Rooney, gets the stunner, and bye-bye! Hell, even Steve Austin couldn't resist laughing at the way Booker went out. On the we might as well rename this Royal Rumble match to the one where everyone keeps brawling after getting mad that they've been eliminated. And is The Undertaker still beating up Maven on the popcorn stand? Excellent that Triple H inevitably wins this match, but shame that it ends with the wrestler thinks he won and prematurely celebrates, which leads to his loss cliche. 